Our speaker today is my friend from the days they were students together with Ngede in Apakabete campus. And he have been friends since then after he, he is actually Dr. Wangombe. He became reverend later, but uh, he did veterinary science. So we have called him Dr. Wangombe for many years. And um, then he joined Focus. So he, him and I have been involved with Focus for all the years when he was, when he was actually working full time with the Focus. And then after that, he, he left Focus and became the pastor of the Inverance Church, Kawas, Kawasukari, which has been doing for a long time. Like last Saturday, he invited me to train the church leaders in his church. So we are connected as friends, both uh, as family friends. His wife and himself are my, 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 my friends, and they are also my wife's friends. So we are grateful. He has tackled issues like the one we are dealing with. He has tackled before. But you are praying that the Lord will help him as he tackles this, um, this very, very important topic. I would want to remind him three things. It's not just encouraging us. We are being trained as to... We, the summons he gives us is a summon we shall take to speak to the students. So we are being trained. It's a TOT, training of trainers. So we, we are not only gaining as people, we are also of necessity being trained in order to go and give this message to the, to the students, which is uh, an important thing for us to deal with. So the place of faith in a believer's life is not only needed for us, but it's something we want to pass on to the students. So we are listening in order to pass on. That's why we are recording this message, Dr. Wangombe, so that not even the patrons that were not able to come to this meeting we are going to place it in our website. And if you are here for the first time, you need to know that, that we are recording the, the, the speaker, then we are going to take that message and put it in our, no, it's not called website, it's called the uh, YouTube account. And the YouTube account reads KSF, K-E-A-T, and you can actually get the message there. However, Dr. Wangombe is also going to give us the notes, and the notes are going to be, uh, to be uh, put in our website. KSF Kit website, so that if you want the notes, you'll find them in the website. If you want the actual talk, you are going to get it in, in, the, in, the, in the YouTube account. So, Dr. Angombe, we are really happy that you are willing to, to come and share with us on this issue of the place of faith in a believer's life. We are believers. We want to know about the place of faith. Dr. Angombe, you can now unmute as I pray for you. Lord, we pray, we put our brother into your hands that you have a special anointing that breaks the yoke so that all of us who are listening and the ones who will listen from, the, from, from, from what is recorded are going to discover a place of walking with you in faith that releases them to enjoy their life. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Over to you, Daktari. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Elder John. It's a joy to uh, be able to fellowship with this wonderful uh, team. And uh, it's a great story uh, of how it was formed uh, so many years ago and is still growing strong and working among students. So please do receive my greetings, all of you, in the name of Jesus. And I pray that our time together will be a blessing. Uh, do not be deceived by that background you're seeing. Uh, I just didn't want you to see what is behind me. Uh, but now I'll go off uh, video uh, to save on, uh, uh, so that the internet might be smoother as we share uh, together. Well, um, I, I am extremely privileged, again, uh, to share uh, with you uh, this matter uh, of the place of faith in a believer's uh, life. Um, the story is told about uh, um, Hudson Taylor uh, when he was uh, a missionary in uh, China. They were headed somewhere. They were somewhere between the Malay Peninsula and uh, Sumatra, the island of Sumatra. And they were on that direction, and the wind failed because those were the days when uh, 
boats or vessels um, would uh, need wind uh, to drive them. So wind failed and uh, the captain was very worried. Uh, he came to uh, tell us room and, and said, sir, um, we have no wind. We are drifting toward an island where the people are heathen. You know, those are the days they used those words. Uh, missionaries also use some of those words that we do not want to use today. They, they, they are demeaning. But anyway, the word is, you know, people here are, are heathen. And I fear that they might be cannibals as a captain. So then uh, Hudson Taylor asked, so what, what can I do? The captain said, I understand that you believe in God. I want you to pray for wind. All right, captain, I will. But you must set sail in or the cutting that was used to trap wind so that it gets to the direction uh, of the wind. The captain said, that's ridiculous. There is not even the slightest breeze of wind. And in any case, if I do that, the sailors will think that I am mad. Uh, but he ins Taylor insisted, if you want us to pray and believe for wind, then uh, set sail, position uh, the sail so that when the wind comes, we are able to move. Then he went away and he came back 45 minutes later to the room uh, uh, where Hudson Taylor was. He found Hudson Taylor was on his knees. He had been praying all that time. So the captain says, sir, you can stop praying now uh, because we've got more wind than we know what to do uh, with. Well, that's the story of a man who believes a man who says, when I pray, I believe that God will do something about my prayer. And that is part of what we'll be describing uh, as faith. To lead us in this uh, discussion, I have chosen uh, Hebrews chapter 10 and chapter 11. I will read uh, a long passage from Hebrews chapter 10, uh, verse number... Uh, 19, and I'll go all the way to chapter 11, uh, verse number 6, just to help us get a glimpse of a familiar passage, but just to remind ourselves. Hebrews chapter 10, verse number 19 says, Therefore, brothers and uh, sisters, since we have confidence to enter the most holy place by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way opened for us through the cutting, that is his body, and since we have a great priest over the house of God, let us draw near to God with a sincere heart and with the full assurance that faith brings. With the full assurance that faith brings. Having our hearts sprinkled to cleanse us from a guilty conscience and having our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold unswervingly to the hope we profess for he who promised is faithful. And let us consider how we may spur one another on toward love and good deeds, not giving up meeting together as some are in the habit of doing, but encouraging one another and all the more as you see the day approaching. If we deliberately keep on sinning after we have received the knowledge of the truth, no sacrifice for sins is left but only a fearful expectation of judgment and of raging fire that will consume the enemies of God. Anyone who rejected the law of Moses died without mercy on the testimony of two or three witnesses. How much more uh, severely do you think someone deserves to be punished who has trampled the Son of God underfoot, who has treated as an unholy thing the blood of the covenant that sanctified them? And who has insulted the spirit of grace? For we know him who said, it is mine to avenge, I will repay. And again, the Lord will judge his people. It is a dreadful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. Remember those who are earlier, days after you had received the light. When you endured, remember those earlier days after you had received the light, when you endured in a great conflict full of suffering, 
Sometimes you were publicly exposed to insult and persecution. To other times, at other times, you stood side by side with those who were so treated. You suffered along with those in prison and joyfully accepted the confiscation of your property because you knew that you yourselves had better and lasting possessions. So do not throw away your confidence. It will be richly rewarded. You need to persevere so that when you have done the will of God, you will receive what he has promised. For in just a little while, he who is coming will come and will not delay. And but my righteous one will live by faith. And I take no pleasure in the one who shrinks back. But do not belong, uh, but we do not belong to those who shrink back and are destroyed, but to those who have faith and are saved. So now we go to Hebrews 11. Uh, verse 1 says, Now faith is, conf is, is confidence in what we hope for and assurance about what we do not see. This is what the ancients were commended for. By faith we understand that the universe was formed at God's command, so that what is seen was not made out of what was visible. By faith, Abel brought God a better offering than Cain did. By faith he was commended as righteous when God spoke well of his offerings, and by faith Abel still speaks even though he is dead. By faith Enoch was taken from this life so that he did not exp experience death. He uh, could not be found because God had taken him away. For before he was taken, he was commended as one who pleased God. And without faith, it is impossible to please God because anyone who comes to him must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who earnestly seek him. That is the word of the Lord. This uh, long text I have read is part of that uh, book called the uh, Hebrews, the letter to the Hebrews, and it's a book that we know quite, 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 quite a bit about, and it was written to Jewish believers who were undergoing persecution, and they were tempted to go back, so they had faith in God, became born again, but now persecution and uh, things, questions, and issues were really battering their faith, and they were tempted to go back. And the writer writes, uh, through the Holy Spirit, of course, to tell them that they cannot afford to go back. They cannot afford to go back because what they have believed is over and above what the, what the Jewish teachers were teaching. It was something that could not be compared uh, with even the law of Moses, and, and so on. And so you will see in that book, the superiority of Christ championed over Moses uh, and, and so on. So that's what you will, you will see in, uh, in this letter uh, to the Hebrews. Now, he tells them, particularly in chapter 11, he gives them a chronicle of people who lived by faith. But before he can do that, he defines faith and brings a little background before he now gives examples of men and women uh, who believed, uh, who lived by faith. Um, he is telling them that your faith is precious. You can't lose it. You can't afford to go back. You, you, your faith is so precious, but you're not the first ones because some of your fathers whom you, whom you believe in, like Moses, like Abraham, uh, like Jacob, they live by faith. Don't even think that they live because of the law that Moses was given. They lived by faith. And so he is writing to pursue it, to persuade them, to appeal to their hearts and their minds that, make, that faith makes sense, that they are not the first ones, that actually their fathers lived uh, in the same way as he is encouraging them to live by uh, faith. But first, let's jump to uh, chapter 11 before we come back to chapter 10 and ask ourselves, so what is this faith that we are talking um, about? How can we define it? Thomas Aquinas um, speaks of faith as an act 
of the intellect assenting to the truth at the command of the will. Let me repeat that. This is Thomas Aquinas. Um, faith as an act of the intellect. In other words, the, 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 the logical part uh, is, is still there. The intellect is still there. Faith is an act of that intellect as that intellect ascends or accepts the truth, the truth at the command of the will. So that's uh, Thomas Aquinas. Another man called Paul uh, Tillich defines faith as an act of the total personality. So you will notice the word act, the total personality um, along somewhat uh, uh, similar lines. So, so we have two people there. You, 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 have, uh, you have Thomas Aquinas, you have Paul Tillich, along similar lines, then you have John Locke, uh, who, who is an interesting ca character in the uh, in, uh, area of philosophy. Speaks of faith as an ascent to a proposition. Ascent to a proposition. And we can go on and on in this line, uh, in this line of de describing what, what faith is. Others have called it the, um, the, the right to adopt um, a believing attitude, you know, the right to adopt a believing attitude. But all this, if we go back there later and just uh, think through what uh, other people have said. Um, but let, let's now ask what, uh, what, uh, the, uh, what the, the writer here um, is saying in uh, chapter 11, verse 1. Faith is confidence. Uh, chapter 11, verse 1. Now, faith is confidence in what we hope for and assurance about what we do not see. Faith is a confidence in what we hope for and assurance about what we do not see. So if you go back to that act of the will, uh, act of uh, the intellect, assenting to the truth, this confidence in what we hope for has an object, and that object is God. God is the one who has spoken. God is the one who has, who has spoken. So our, our, um, when we read and hear what he has spoken, we believe and command the will, uh, our will to believe in what God has spoken because of the speaker. It is, so there is an object here and there is a, um, and there's an act. So faith is really an action of what we have believed the source who is God has said. And we believe in it so strongly, we are able to act um, because the person who has spoken is, is, is an authority, is, is our creator, so when he instructs us and, and says something, we so believe in the one who has spoken that we now act. We have confidence. We have confidence and we have a hope. So faith speaks to hopelessness and faith speaks to lack of confidence in life because the source of uh, what we believe can be trusted. That is God, our creator, um, our Lord. And because he has spoken, we act, uh, our intellect will act upon what God has said. That's how um, I would uh, describe uh, faith um, at the moment in terms of our dialogue here uh, on what uh, faith would be. And then um, after he has defined what faith is, he now gives examples. And it is a very interesting journey. Um, I've done some sermons along this line about characters around uh, Hebrews 11. And it is very interesting when we look at every one of them and how they acted. How they acted. And uh, if you just look at the few that uh, I have uh, um, 
chosen there in chapter uh, 11, uh, if you look at uh, uh, verse 2, first of all, it says chapter 11, verse 2, this is what the ancients were commended for, the ancients, that whole list the Jews need to look at because they believe in their in their own. And so the writer here, the Holy Spirit, presents a list of their own, uh, like Abraham, like, uh, like Noah, like Ebo and others. So back to verse 2, this is what the, the ancients were commended for. By faith, we understand that the universe was formed at God's command. So uh, you and I, in Moses writing uh, uh, Genesis, writing Genesis, the Holy Spirit speaking through him to, to put to, uh, to paper uh, Genesis, what God is saying about creation we believe, and Moses believed as he had God, that the universe where he found himself, he found himself in a world. He saw the sun, the moon, and the stars. He saw seasons, he saw nights and days and wondered how they came to be. He saw creation around him, his, uh, his wife. Um, he saw the desert, he saw his children, he saw the oppressors. And uh, God spoke to him about deliverance. And when he was trying to make sense about, about how, how, where did this come from? Because God said it, he wrote it down, and we have read it. We understand and believe that the universe was formed at God's command. So that what is seen was made out, out of what was not seen. God spoke the world to become. God said, let there be light, and it became, light became. The sun was formed as a product of the voice of God. And then, so what was what is now being seen is a result of what was not seen. It was a result of the voice of God. By faith, um, Abel brought about... A better uh, brought uh, brought God a better offering than Cain did. By faith, he was commended as righteous when God spoke well of his offerings. And uh, by faith, Abel still speaks. So here we we are seeing these Asians who acted. Abel uh, and his brother Cain went to offer a sacrifice. He went by faith, offered a sacrifice. And by the way, it is not because. Uh, uh, I, I want you to note that uh, uh, Abel and, and, and Cain brought different types of sacrifices. It was not the type, really. I do not believe it was just because it was it was one brought uh, farmland and the other one brought uh, brought uh, livestock. No, it is the attitude with which they brought the sacrifice. He came and he believed that God, in his heart, that God would accept uh, his, his his sacrifice. And we can go on and on. Uh, a, a great journey uh, of our patriarchs here. But that is what uh, faith is. So I want to walk through uh, a few um, comments here, which uh, we can, we can uh, later uh, meditate on. Number one, I would say that faith comes uh, from an encounter with God. Faith is a gift um, from God. And we, we, we see that um, by looking at uh, Hebrews chapter 10. Now I'm back to chapter 10 and I'm looking at verse 19. Therefore, brothers and sisters, since we have confidence to enter the most holy place by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way open for us through the curtain, that is his body. And since we have a great priest over the house of God and we we can go on and on and go to the lettuces of the Bible. Let us do this. Let us do that. But here, verse 19 introduces to us um, a confidence that we have uh, to enter the most holy place. This is a Jew being told about a holy and the holy of holies and a place that people never entered. Only a priest would enter here once a year. Uh, and uh, now Jesus has, has done something about that. He has become our high priest. Through his blood, he has entered uh, the holy place. And 
at the most holy place. He has entered through his own blood. And we, as people who have faith in him, now can enter. We have confidence to enter that place. So faith elsewhere, we know that there is a gift uh, from, from God. Christ has done. In Acts chapter 16, we have an example of a jailer. This jailer, um, uh, verse uh, uh, 29, Acts 16, 29 uh, to 34, uh, Paul and Silas are in prison and they, they are uh, there and uh, they would otherwise be grieving and mourning and crying, but that's not what they are doing. They are praising God. And right there, uh, a miracle happens, and uh, then this jailer is so overwhelmed by what has happened, and he asks a question. Sir, verse number 29, what, sirs, what must I do to be saved? I wonder what, how he understood salvation whether they were singing and preaching and he, he heard about salvation and he's asking, he's asking uh, uh, what, what shall I do to be saved? Verse 31, they replied, believe in the Lord Jesus and you will be saved, you and your household. Believe in the Lord Jesus. Faith is a gift from God that comes from an encounter with Jesus. That is the origin of saving faith. Uh, by the way, we could talk about saving faith and we could talk about living faith. A faith that saves and a faith that gives us power for living. Uh, we will be looking at that just, just shortly. But this is the origin. How do you get faith? You get it by this encounter with God, an encounter with Jesus, an appreciation that you are a sinner and an appreciation that you need to be saved and therefore, by believing in him, you are saved. Now in Romans chapter uh, 10, um, the writer here, again, the Holy Spirit, verse number 8 says, Romans 10, verse 8, but what does it say? The word is near you, it is in your mouth, and is in your heart. That is the message uh, concerning faith that we proclaim. If you declare with your mouth. Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead. You will be saved, for it is by uh, it is with your heart that you believe and are justified, and it is with your mouth that you profess your faith and are saved. The scripture says, verse 11, anyone who believes in him will never be put to shame. This is really the birth of saving faith. Believing in the Lord Jesus Christ and being saved. A gift from God comes from an encounter with him, and in particular, an encounter with Jesus who forgives our sins and uh, gives us a faith that saves us and a faith to live by. So that's the origin of faith. So the next thing I want to say is that faith gives hope. Faith gives hope. This comes from uh, Hebrews 10, verse 23. Let us hold unswervingly to the hope we profess, for he who promised is faithful. So here is a God who has given us the gift of faith, forgiven our sins, and now, after giving us the peace in our hearts, after giving us his son Jesus, and we have started the journey of faith, now he gives us hope. It's a hope that we profess. It is a hope that conquers hopelessness in this world. It is a hope that looks at a scenario and says, hey, things can be better. Hey, there is a God who can turn this situation. Although this situation is going south, God can turn it around. And so in our lives, and uh, I have listened to the testimonies that uh, we were giving um, here. Some are testimonies of thanksgiving. Others are testimonies of hope in a difficult situation. A situation where um, an organization that's supposed to be giving us uh, um, 
equipment to, to power so that we can pay them has not done that from 2020. Uh, you wonder whether it's money they don't want or they're just disorganized. And here you have, uh, um, you have uh, invested and you want to start receiving um, uh, profit from your investment. And this organization um, is not doing what it's supposed to, to do. But we have faith and praying and faith and having and believing that God will turn this situation around. That is faith that uh, for living that gives us hope. Faith that gives us hope that things will be better tomorrow. It's a faith that looks at a scenario um, where our economy hasn't performed very well, where investments are difficult to, to make decisions about where you will invest because the business environment is not good. But a faith that gives us hope tells us we have a God in heaven who can turn situations around. The same faith that saves us is the same faith that will keep us. The same faith where we are able to say, I am now saved. I am born again. Because we believe in the one who said that you believe in your heart and your mouth confesses, and you will be saved. That same faith is the same faith that will keep us walking. It's the same faith that will, we will tell a student who is a D or an E student that if you work hard and they pray, we can trust God that he, he can turn your situation around. He can open your mind that when you read, you capture things. He can give you discipline. That same saving faith is the same faith that will give us hope for tomorrow. The second, the third thing I want to say is that faith needs to be stirred, to stir, to stir, niku koroga, niku changam, kuchangam sha. That faith needs to be stirred, and we see that in chapter 10, verse 24, it says, and let us consider how we may spar one another on towards love and good deeds, um, not giving up meeting together as some are in the habit of doing, but encouraging one another and all the more as you see the day approaching, which is this day approaching is a day of the Lord, the day of the return of our Lord Jesus Christ. Because life can be very difficult, it needs to be approached by faith uh, in the giver of that faith and the giver of answers to prayer and the giver of affirmation, uh, because this world will be difficult, we will need to star or to spar, to spar or to star uh, faith uh, as we share one with another. And there's some interesting uh, uh, things there on that, uh, in that verse. To spar one another on towards love and good deeds and not to give up meeting together. That's why it's exciting when uh, Elder John talks about 50 years uh, when this fellowship was born and through its ups and downs, at some point they needed to relook at, at, how, uh, at, at what is best, how should this fellowship continue um, and reforming it. Th there is this uh, meeting constant. Why should Christians meet? Christians should meet. Because when they do this par one another, this tar one another, their faith is encouraged. When it is demearing, it's going down. When they meet, when they pray together, uh, when they, one sings a psalm, one brings a poem, one brings a prophecy, one brings a word of encouragement, there is tiring, tiring uh, of faith. And faith needs uh, to be um, Stirred. Now, there is a story in Mark chapter 9 of a father who had a son who was possessed by an evil spirit. And this uh, father came to uh, the disciples and the disciples were unable uh, to, to heal uh, the, their son. It's uh, in Mark chapter 9, uh, all the way from verse 17, all the way um, uh, further down, Jesus rebukes them. Um, and then, uh, for lack of faith, and uh, in verse 23, Jesus asked the boy's father, how long has he been like this? Uh, from childhood, childhood, he answered, 
It has often thrown him into fire or water to kill him. But if you can do anything, take pity on us and help us. That's the father still talking. And Jesus says in verse 23, if you can, say Jesus, everything is possible for one who believes. Everything is possible for one who believes. And then verse 22, 24 is very interesting. Immediately, the boy's father exclaimed, I do believe. Help me overcome my unbelief. Why is this statement important? This statement in, is important because the father has just heard something powerful from Jesus. That Jesus will do it because he believes that the father has given him power over demons. And because of that, he will take and take action on demons and command them to leave. Now he is telling the, uh, this father in this dialogue, because this father has it, you, your disciples are unable to do anything. If you can, please, if you can. Because from what I see, it's as if you can. If you can, please help us. Jesus turns to this father and it's, it's like, what did you say? Did you say, if I can, or if someone can, here is a lesson for you, father to this son. Everything is possible for one who believes. And, and this believing, please remember the context that we had earlier. It's believing in the one who speaks and the one who creates. And that is God, believing that what he has said he can do, he will do. Immediately, this man realizes that the outcome of what he is asking wholly depends, depends a lot on, what, on whether he believes in the one speaking, that the one speaking can actually do it. Immediately, the boy's father exclaimed, I believe, please help my unbelief. Another version. I believe, please help my unbelief. This version says, I do believe, help me overcome my unbelief. Now, look at that. Here is a recognition. It's a very genuine, honest recognition. I am supposed to believe. Now, Lord, I believe. But should I have a speck of unbelief? Please help me overcome my unbelief. We are on that point that says that faith needs to be stirred. Faith needs to be stirred. And when Christians come together, when they stir one another, uh, they help, uh, they help um, rekindle the faith of each other. Where there could be doubt because of things that have happened in life uh, to someone, that is set aflame again when another brother or sister has shared uh, some story of what has happened, and those of us whose faith was ebbing low, we are, we are stirred up. We are fanned again into, uh, into flame. Faith is stirred when we have an encounter with Jesus, like this man is having an encounter with Jesus. When you have an encounter with Jesus as you read his word, as you pray to him, as you seek him, as you knock, when you have that encounter with Jesus like this man, your faith is set aflame again. It is a faith that began when you believed. So it is that saving faith that is being rekindled and it becomes uh, faithful living when we have an encounter with Jesus, when we are in constant fellowship with him in his word and in prayer and looking at what he is doing and marveling in what is, he is doing in the lives of other people and in this world and appreciating that and picking that as part of our journey. It's by when we recognize our weaknesses, when we recognize how inadequate we are, how dependent we are on God. So we fall before him and say, I believe, Lord, but help my unbelief. It is saying it is possible that I could lose faith here. Lord, if I am in that position, help my unbelief. And who are you talking to? 
you are talking to Jesus. You are talking to God. We uh, may ebb away sometimes, but we, our faith can be, uh, can be, can be fanned into flame again. In Mark chapter 11, Jesus again is uh, talking to his disciples. When evening came, verse number 19 of Mark 11, Jesus and his disciples went out to the city, out, out of the city. In the morning, as they went along, they saw the fig tree withered from the roots. Peter remem remembered and said to Jesus, Rabbi, look, the fig tree you cast has withered. So here is actually an object lesson um, to his disciples. He had passed by this fig tree, checked it out for fruit. There was nothing. He cast it for being fruitless. And here, actually, he is giving a, them a lesson uh, about the Jewish people uh, who have not who have not been uh, fruitful and have not been bearing fruit. But anyway, they 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 realize when they are coming back that tree that Jesus addressed is 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 dead. It has dried. Verse twenty two says, "Have faith in God." Yeah, as a statement, "Have faith in God." Jesus answered. Truly, I tell you, if anyone says to this mountain, go through yourself into the sea and does not doubt in their heart, but believes that what they say will happen, it will be done for them. Therefore, I tell you, whatever you ask for in prayer, believe that you have received it and it will be yours. And when you stand praying, if you hold anything against anyone, forgive them. Uh, so that your Father in heaven may forgive you uh, your sins. A few lessons there, but I think it is important to always uh, remind ourselves the context, because I would not want a situation where we are having faith in faith. No, we are having faith in God, in a God who answers prayers. So our object is God, and it is what he has said, it is what he has spoken, and faith for us is acting, is an act of, it's an act um, in obedience or in consideration of what God has said. Now, 2 Corinthians chapter 5 has an interesting uh, uh, comment there. For we live by faith, not by sight. That is 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 6. Therefore, we are always confident and know that as long as we are at home in the body, we are away from the Lord. He's addressing um, issues of life and death. For we live by faith, not by sight. We are confident, I say, mm -hmm. and would prefer to be away from the body and at home with the Lord. So we make it our goal to please him, whether we are at home, in the body, or away from it. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, so that each of us may, may receive what is due um, us uh, for the things uh, done while in the body, whether good or bad. We live by faith and not by sight. An important point there. Let me merge uh, two points. I, um, I, I wanted to say that faith uh, uh, needs to be stirred, and I had another point, faith needs to be guarded. But let me combine those two and say faith needs to be stirred and guarded. And the point I want to drive home here mm -hmm. is that it is possible because of the way the world is and the activities of Satan, it is possible that our faith can be shaken, and I would even say from the examples of scripture, that it is possible for men and women to have their hearts hardened, so that the faith that saved them waxes weak in their practice of that faith, and they could even deny uh, that faith. Hebrews chapter 10, uh, verse 26 up to verse 31 has this to say, if we deliberately keep on sinning after we have received the knowledge of the truth, no sacrifice for sins is left, but only a fearful expectation of judgment and of raging fire that will consume the enemies of God. 
Anyone who rejected the law of Moses died without mercy on the testimony of two or three witnesses. How much more severely do you think someone deserves to be punished who has trampled the Son of God underfoot, who has treated as an unholy thing the blood of the covenant that sanctified them, and who has insulted the Spirit of grace? For we know him who said it is, it is mine to avenge, I will repay. And again, the Lord will judge his people. It is a dreadful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. This is a response to a thinking that uh, because one has been saved by faith, as the Apostle Paul would uh, emphasize, they can live a careless life and keep sinning deliberately. From verse number 26, if we deliberately keep on sinning. Now, the Apostle uh, Paul elsewhere and the writer here says, behaving like that is trampling, is trampling on the grace of God. It's tapping on the grace of God and insulting the spirit of grace. When you are sanctified, and yet you go on sinning, and, the, and it's, it's very curly here, that there's no sacrifice for sins left for you, only a fearful expectation of judgment and a raging fire that will consume the enemies of God. So when someone um, has believed, but then over time, uh, their faith is, is, is getting, getting weak because of the lifestyle they have chosen, sinning deliberately, continuously, and not repenting, refusing to repent, because when you fall into sin and you repent uh, and you believe you are forgiven, but it is rise and walk and do not do this again. Do not sin again in this way. Like that uh, woman who was caught uh, uh, in the act and uh, was about to be stoned. And uh, Jesus says, go uh, and sin uh, no more. I too will not condemn you. Uh, they didn't stone you. I too will not go and have your life changed. Now, when in the course of our life we encounter these, these challenges, then we must uh, fan into flame that's the, the, that's the essence of fellowship and also guard in our personal walk with God, guard our faith. Because from 1 Timothy chapter 5, 1 Timothy chapter 5, verse number 8. This is what it reads. Anyone who does not provide for their relatives. Now, these are brethren. And especially for their own households. These are brethren. Has denied the faith. And is what is worse than unbeliever. This is just one example. Not being able to, being careless and not taking care of, of your household. being Not being responsible. That lifestyle and whatever else was in Hebrews 10, of sinning deliberately, that kind of lifestyle. One is described as denying the faith, as falling, trouncing on the grace of God, and insulting the spirit of grace. One more illustration here before I move on towards conclusion. You know, I've been, uh, I don't know whether you've ever thought about Ananias, brother Ananias and his wife, sister, uh, uh, our, our sister there, Sapphira, great brethren in the fellowship. Why did they die such a bad death? Uh, you know, those who read the Bible in a different way said uh, they accused of Peter of killing uh, Ananias and, and Sapphira. But uh, now looking at uh, this, this uh, passage, uh, uh, that is in Acts chapter 5, uh, a man named Sapphira, uh, Ananias, and his wife Sapphira, verse number three. Now they, they have come to Peter, and uh, by God's spirit, Peter has seen something. Ananias, how is it that Satan has so filled your heart that you have lied to the Holy Spirit and kept for yourself some of the money you received for the land didn't it belong to you before it was sold? And after it was sold, wasn't the money at your disposal? What made you think of doing such a thing? How did this happen? 
you have not just lied to human beings, but to God. This is a scene of, how do you describe this scene? Uh, how would a brother and a sister like this uh, get into this kind of, kind of scene? And verse 9, his wife comes a little later. Maybe Ananias was a church elder and he went there for earlier. And his wife uh, came back a little later. Verse 9, how could you conspire to test the spirit of the Lord? How could you conspire to test the spirit of the Lord? So the point I'm driving here is that faith can struggle. Faith can struggle. And we have other example of, examples of Himenaeus and Philetus. Um, and uh, in the Old Testament, there are many, including some uh, like Korah, sons of Korah. The earth opens, swallows them up, um, and, and so on. Faith needs to be stirred. Faith needs to be guarded. Let me uh, quickly go to um, one or two other things here. Faith will be challenged. Faith will be challenged. That's my next point there. And it comes from uh, uh, Hebrews 10, uh, it's close to what I have just said. Um, and uh, verse 34, uh, verse 32, actually, just a reminder. Remember those early days after you had received the light when you endured the great conflict full of suffering. Verse 35, so do not throw away your confidence. It will be richly rewarded. Verse 36, you need to persevere. Verse 13, 8, let my righteous one uh, will my but my righteous one will live by faith, and I take no pleasure in the one who shrinks back. But we do not belong to those who shrink back and are destroyed, but to those who have faith and are uh, saved. Um, I have appeared to belabor this point, but I have been deliberate on this because. This is a general carelessness that is uh, uh, happening among Christians, particularly in the, in the urban areas, um, where um, it is said that, uh, um, you know, I, I just don't want to go to the uh, to very specific uh, situations here, but just to say where you, you, you are made to feel like uh, once you are saved, you, you are fine. You can go on with your life. You can... Uh, because you are born, you cannot be unborn, uh, and, and so on. And there's that theology uh, that uh, is making us a little uh, careless in the way we live. But I think if what I have read here and many other verses is anything to go by, uh, let's receive the gift of faith that we have been given by God, nurture it, guard it, and not throw away our confidence in him, and uh, know that we will be challenged and that we will need to stand firm in the footsteps of that wonderful uh, cloud of witnesses. By the way, I was looking at that verse there, uh, that chapter. It's a cloud of witnesses. Uh, it should be crowd of witnesses. But the Holy Spirit here chose to use cloud of witnesses. Now, we have a wonderful list of men and women who endured. So we need to persevere. There will be uh, a challenge. My final uh, comment here is that faith pleases God. Faith pleases God. Hebrews chapter 6, verse number 6. Without faith, it is impossible to please God because anyone who comes to him must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who honestly seek him. So, brothers and sisters uh, and the people we minister to, we need to receive the gift of uh, faith uh, with both hands. Saving faith and living faith. Saving faith is also uh, what God has given, uh, given, given us to live by. The, the, um, uh, the righteous will live by faith. They will live by uh, faith because without faith, it is impossible to please God. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. So faith pleases God. And those who believe, therefore, must, those who have faith must believe that God exists and that he's a rewarder 
of those who earnestly seek him. So friends, this, this passage in particular gives me a lot of hope in my prayer life that I believe that God will reward those who earnestly seek him. But my object will always remain God. It is faith in God. It is not in faith in me or, or my statements. It is faith in what God has, has said that he will do. And that faith that saves, it's also the faith that works. As James would say, it is demonstrated in the way I live. I, I work to show what I believe. In, in fact, I, my works uh, are just a natural way of express, expressing what I have believed. And I'm able to walk, therefore, uh, by faith and not by sight. In conclusion, a quotation from uh, Reverend uh, J. Martin in uh, um, a write-up called, called The Power of Choice. It says that throughout the day, now you are mourning my, my, my morning. throughout the day, we have the choice to have faith that God is in control, meaning that all that happens is for my greater good. Oh, we can go around in fear, worried and negative, expecting the worst. So faith for living, which is also faith that saves us, that faith for living is an appropriation of faith that saved me. I have a choice to make. When I wake up in the morning, I have a choice throughout the day to have faith that God is in control. So when I wake up and pray and I step out, I believe God is in control of my day. God is going to guide me where I should go. He will guide me what I will say. And whatever happens to me today will be for my good. I have the other choice of saying, oh, this, the clouds are too heavy. Things are going to be really bad. The economy is, is going to be terrible. I don't even know whether I'll, I'll sell anything when I go out there uh, into the market. I can go be fearful, worried, and expecting the worst. But when I go in faith, the saving faith will also be the faith by which I will live in a God who saves. Thank you so much for listening to me. I think I'll close there. Um, I probably have gone overboard, but uh, let, me, let me make a short prayer to the Lord. Heavenly Father, thank you for speaking to us about faith. Why do I need as a Christian faith? I need faith because it's faith that says, faith in a savior. Faith in the one who walks with me, who saved me, who, who wrote my name in the book of life, who removed the bad record of my past and replaced it with his grace. But I need faith too, to walk and live a victorious life. Faith in the son of God. Faith, therefore, that will open doors because God has said he will. Thank you, Lord, our God. I pray for all of us, myself included, that you will help us be men and women of faith in a God who answers prayers. I ask this in your name. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much. And back to the moderator of the day. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Dr. Reverend Peterson. We really appreciate for ministering to us about faith. Uh, I'll open this forum maybe for a few minutes. We would share maybe a comment or a question if any of us have any of that. And I'll request also Brother Ngede, John, you'll prepare for a closing remark, a vote of thanks, and also a prayer. But in the meantime, anyone who has a question or a remark, kindly unmute and share it. Uh, I want to acknowledge also Margaret Moragori. I think that person I have not met, or maybe you have talked, but I'm using a different gadget. And also Jane.
Kamondo. Thank you both of you for joining. Anyone with a question or a remark, this is your chance. Thank you, Adrian. I think um, the lesson is so personally persuasive that uh, I'm challenged not only just to to have faith when I need my things done, but it's uh, basically having faith in that Savior. Do I believe in what he says? Do I take it or is it uh, just like uh, something like a button I want only to press when it's on me, but what is my role even as uh, I believe in this Savior? I think that was the most stunning point for me in this sermon. And I thank God for the facilitator. God bless. Thank you, Afantas. I see you have two more minutes. So, because we should be closing at 30, uh, 30 past five. So, I still have a chance for two more people or one. Then your hand is up, so just proceed. Yeah. yeah, good afternoon. Yeah, the the faith, uh, faith, especially with the definition, is 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 very clear. Um, but I think one of the things that uh, challenges uh, oh. people in the issues of faith is, like, when you you told when you pray. In the name of Jesus, your your prayers will be answered, and people make so many prayers, and they do it in the name of Jesus. And usually, we shall say, "I pray this, believing and trusting in Jesus." And then some prayers are not answered. Is it that? Um, what is wrong with my faith when my prayers are not answered? <laughs> Should I comment now? Yeah, just go on. Yeah, um, yeah. You know, when we when we pray, uh, our, our role and our job is is to pray and to keep our relationship. Uh, with uh, God and just that last statement I ended with is to say that uh, uh, what what does God want uh, for me when I pray um, my role is is to pray and to believe and to keep praying because uh, to keep knocking uh, to keep knock. Sometimes the balance between uh, how how long should I pray, um, and is does God is God saying yes? Is God saying no? Um, should I pray once, twice, um, and then at the end of the day asking? So what is God's will for me here? Sometimes it's very difficult to know. Should I now stop or should I keep praying? But. From experience, I find that uh, sometimes as I pray, I may have a witness that really this is God's will, and therefore um, I should continue praying with thanksgiving at what God has done. But what if he doesn't do it? Maybe not the way I want. Then because I have trust in God, I will also say, because God has not given me the answer I wanted, I am not going to abandon him. I want to believe that uh, the status uh, at the moment for me, that uh, he is strengthening my faith, uh, because one of the ways of strength, strength, God strengthens our faith is actually through trials and temptations and being stretched. So I will still say I have prayed, just that, like the Apostle Paul who prayed uh, three times, and his uh, thorn in the flesh was not removed, but God had a different answer. Uh, says that my strength is made weakness uh, is is made perfect in your weakness. 
Um, and when you are there for weak, you are also strong. Sometimes God may have a different uh, uh, answer for me. Uh, and, and, and I think for me, my struggle is to ask the Lord to help me perceive and give me a quietness in my heart that says this is not what God wants you to have. Or, yes, go on. God is, the answer is on the way. Um, so I think the, the, the major thread is what we do with an answer, what we perceive as an, an answered prayer, whether we will say God is unfair or God doesn't like me, or we will say God is answering in a different way and that uh, his will is perfect uh, for me. Thank you, Reverend. I hope. Uh, it is clearer for each one of us, even through that question from Sister Jane. Uh, is there any other remark, comment, or question? The notes will be posted in our YouTube channel. Rather, the, the, the recording, and also we'll be getting in touch with Reverend Peterson so that he can share the notes with us which we normally post in our website so that then they are accessible to us for reference now and even in future. I would request... Yes, I'll polish them. Uh, I'll polish them uh, even in view of some of that, like that question that was asked, and I will send them. I appreciate Thank you. Thank you very much. Brother John Nyede, kindly pray with us and make the closing remarks. John Gede, you are muted, just in case you are talking to us. Can you hear me now? Yeah, yeah. thank you, Brother Adrian, for giving me this opportunity, and even for Brother Dr. Peterson. We used to call you Peterson way back in 86. And I think I'm reminded of those moments in uh, the small animal clinic uh, room where we used to do most of the prayers. Uh, you have brought out the issue of faith. Uh, I think more than possibly the way people take it, it comes as a result of the encounter with God. It is faith in God, not faith in faith. Uh, faith gives us hope. We have to start it and guard it. And faith... Uh, need to be challenged. I thank God for the way God has used you this uh, evening and may the, the Lord continue to uh, spy you, uh, stir you also, even as you serve in deliverance and ministry like the one you did today. I think on behalf of uh, our kid, may the Lord bless you. And even for all those who are able to attend today, uh, what you have shared will be remembered as even as it's get recorded others uh, let's pray we are grateful our lord and our god for the opportunity that you've given each one of us lord to listen to your words once again that we may be stirred that we may be collected that we may be lifted up even as we think about faith faith that drivers even to go to schools and believe that the boys and the girls who get saved, the young people that Lord be equipped, will be able to be part of the team that works for the kingdom. We are grateful for the word that has been shared this evening, and even for each one of us, for the missions that are lined up at, up to the end of the term. We thank you that it is not in vain. We have this confidence that, Lord, where you send us, and where we go, whatever we plant shall be able to prosper to the glory and honor of your name. May your joy be our strength. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Amen.